Hello everyone, this is Intoxicating Iguana and welcome to episode 32 of the Wigan Athletic Career Mode. In this episode, it could be three or four games, not sure yet, but it'll be a home game against QPR in the FA Cup to start us off before we travel to Everton, then we travel to Arsenal for two Premier League games. Then depending on what happens, we might have a bit of time for the game against Southampton, who are now a bitter, bitter rivals. But like I said, we'll start off with the game against QPR in the FA Cup. So it is an FA Cup match, so I am going to rotate a few players for this match, but it's still going to be a difficult match. QPR, not a bad side, but a mid-championship, maybe sometimes might even challenge for the playoffs. But yeah, they're a good side, so we've got to play a relatively strong side for this match. But also, we've got to keep in mind that we have some Premier League games coming up in quick succession after this match. So we've got Grigg starting instead of Calvert-Lewin, Jacobs in for Van Bergen, we've got White in for Jack Byrne, Book in at right back for Acosta and Dunkel in for Clark Salter. As for QPR, they've got Silla or Silo up front. Vajolek on the right, Shodipor on the left. Luongo, Borisiuk and Skirwin in the middle. Nathan Byrne, the guy we just sold to QPR, playing at right back. Bidwell, Kolka and Hall, the other defenders. And then Alex Smith is in goal. So, playing against our former player Nathan Byrne in the first game we could potentially play against. And there you go, that is uh, amazing. That also didn't make sense. And what I'm trying to say is the first game we've played after the transfer window is against our former player who we just sold. It's just like amazing how that happens. But, you know, hopefully he won't be as big of a problem for us this game and we can actually do well and uh, potentially get ourselves a win. And with starting like that, you know, getting chances, we could be in. But Nathan Byrne actually turned it behind for a corner. So, you know, he might be helping his old team a bit here, but we couldn't get that. White could get this door, and it's blocked off the back of Will Grigg. Typical. White into Grigg, trying to turn the man, didn't really work out. Gilby will keep that. Salvador now. can he make up for his earlier mistakes? Good ball over to Jacobs, good control as well. Michael Jacobs straight at Smithies, and eventually gathered by the keeper. Little flick inside, not a really good flick. Get it back though. Chaplin off to Grigg and through to Salvador. We've got past Nathan Byrne and it's a good save by Smithies. Jacobs on the rebound, gets it in, makes it 1-0. And we finally get a goal and through that man, Michael Jacobs. A guy who, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure on his future yet. He's either staying or going. It's not like, it's pretty simple actually, staying or going. But it's one of them that if he stays, I'm going to have to play him a lot more. But if he goes... We can bring in somebody a bit better. But when he scores goals like that, not an easy chance. Cracking finish makes it 1-0 in the FA Cup. I can easily use Jacobs as a cup player. But I've got Massey as well. And I like having three players per position usually. But we've got with that Massey and Jacobs. A very similar player as Massey's probably quicker. Jacobs got the better finishing. So I have decisions to make over the future of those two eventually. But for now, it's 1-0 to us and Jacobs gets the goal. Alright, got to defend. Defend, I said. Defend, you fucking idiot. Defend. Like, it is a kickoff glitch in full effect. That's all it is. 1 1. Like, the first chance they get, it goes in because I just can't explain this game at times. It is so weird and stupid. Like, where's the Merkin for one? He slides in well too late, but there's a cracky finish. First time right footed shot. Randolph should do better, though. He dives backwards rather than dive across the goal. It's 1 1. And the game is back on. Fuck's sake. Just like, can we defend after we, after we score a goal? I might just go ultra defensive just for the sake of not conceding a bullshit opening goal like that. Right, white in the middle. Salvador make the run out wide. We'll use a decoy run. Then play it through to you. Salvador, much better. Much, much better, mate. Not a bad game, to be honest. Usually, you quite shit. I mean, like, usually... Nine times out of ten, you have average two crap games. Maybe what? Like, maybe two games now that I can pick out from memory you've done well in. This one and maybe another one, but a good goal from him, a good finish as well. I think technically he got the assist on the first goal as well. Yeah, but good movement, got past Nathan Byrne, who has not been their worst defender, but he hasn't been their best. It's actually a good finish, even though Smithy's kind of rushed out like a bit of an idiot. We get the goal, it's been a shit second half, it really has defensively, attacking wise for both sides. But finally we get the breakthrough, it's 2-1, let's keep this lead. 
Three changes being made after that goal as well. We've got Boateng coming on. We've also got um, Bamert coming on for James. And we've also got uh, somebody else. Uh, Chaplin coming off for Lang. And we're also going to go ultra defensive now because we've just scored. And I don't want to concede if that's an option. I think we've just avoided that. So let's go back to normal play. And saying that, we could actually score from this because of the, the good passing from Boateng who's just come on. But the shot is weak. Lang's going to get it, chip it back in, and there's Grigg. Oh, oh, that's filthy. Will Grigg, that is filthy. 3-1, game's done. No doubt about that now, but once again, we'll just go back to ultra-defensive, because it seemed to fucking work, and put it back up to balanced. But that was a cracking ball back in by Lang, and Grigg's open. Oh, that is filthy, that is just filthy. Ooh. Lovely, lovely goal. I love goals like that. I mean, the first time volleys that go into the corners or that like roof of the net, I love them. They're so good. The talent you need to do that and control the ball and actually get it is just awesome. It's 3 1. Griggs got a goal. Game should be sealed now. That's a good ball, actually. Could be away again. Bamert on. It's his first involvement and he sees Boateng open in a lot of space. Can we finish off the game? Smithies makes a good save and makes it so we can. Through to Salvador. And across to... Really? You blew the whistle there. But anyway, it's a 3-1 win. We're through to the next round of the FA Cup. Good performances there from Salvador. Actually played relatively well, which is quite unusual. And Gilby, they were the two standout performers for us today. Boateng did well off the bench. So did Bamut and uh, Lang actually didn't do too bad either. But Wilgrid gets a goal. Good for him. And we're through to the next round of the FA Cup. Good. And you can see from the stats, it was a well-deserved win. 16 shots, 11 on target for us. Only three on target from the four shots for them. And yeah, just other than that, it was an even game in terms of possession. Both teams tackled well. They did get an injury to Shodipo. I think it was a Burke who decided to mount him. And yeah, kind of fucked him into an injury, literally. But yeah, it's a 3 1 win, through to the next round. And again, Gilbert and Salvador standard performers in that match. And we are at Goodison Perk for this next match. It is snowing as well as we face Everton. Last game, I believe, was a 3 3 draw, and their best player was Kieran Dowell. Hopefully, he ain't playing this match, and if he isn't, we should be in with a good chance of winning this one. And our team looks like this only two changes to the usual starting 11. That's Candera in at show and Boateng coming in for Chaplin and for Salvador. As for Everton, they've got Enrich and Niasse up front, Rooney, Vidal and Schneidlin playing behind them. Kuhls, Funes Mori, somebody else, maybe Rigoni, Williams and Maffeo at the back, and Pickford in goal. So they're playing a better side than they did last time. But saying that, I would have played Kieran Dowell again because he played so well last game that, I don't know, why not play him again? Niasse doing well, Omer Nias. Not a bad player actually. Oh, terrible from me. I give the ball away there, and Acosta couldn't win it back from Cools. I have no idea who this guy is, but he sounds like a cool guy. And yes, that was a shit joke. I probably do deserve to concede for saying that shit joke with tackling like that as well. I do, and I do concede because, yeah, I just I just defended like a dickhead, and Schneiderlin gets a goal. Don't tell me to calm down. I am calm. You'll know when I'm angry because I won't include it in the video. If I'm angry, you don't, you know, you don't hear about it, because why would I do that? But anyway, back home with the actual stuff, that guy's wearing a blue hat. I don't know, just picking out some things. It was shit defended by me, though. I doubted him a Gilby, and then three players. Fucking three of them. Berna Costa and Clark Salter. Couldn't get anywhere near that. It goes through. No saving that from Randolph. And it's 1-0 to Everton, and Schneiderlin with the goal. Honestly, some sides I can't beat. Everton, Southampton... Liverpool at times, you know, you just come against some teams that are just, you know, good on the game, but in real life, they're quite average. 1-0 down, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Maffeo is, oh my god, I can't defend against Everton for some reason. Rooney with a shot, almost a goal as well. Holy shit, Everton are fucking dominating this match, absolutely dominating it. No deflection either, that is just a very good shot, and fucking hell, that is close. Good ball from Acosta into, my god, we couldn't get it through. Rugani defending well. Off now to Reese James. He's going to have to get involved a bit more against this five at the back. That's a good ball in. 
Oh my god, really? Really? You couldn't get the head on that, mate. We could have been level, you dick. Corner ball there for us. Whipping him with a lot of power. Front post, Calvert-Lewin. You G. You absolute G. Against your old club, I don't know how to do the non-celebration thing, or else I would have done it. But I don't give two shits, actually. Fuck that. What a goal by Calvert-Lewin. Ball whipped him with a lot of power towards the front post. He ran off his man, got there, and brilliant header. Brilliant, brilliant header. Just glance it off his head. The defender couldn't get there. I think it actually comes off the crossbar. No chance for Pixford. Pixford? Pickford. Who the hell is Pickford? <laughs> no chance for him. It's 1-1, back of level terms. And the old boy returns with his 19th goal in the Premier League. I bet they're regretting letting him go now. How's Angus McDonald doing for you? I bet he's fantastic. 1-1. He was offside probably anyway. Yes, he was. He was technically involved in play. Yeah, fair enough. I'll let you off. That was the right decision, ref. Why are you playing it short? Why did they play it short? Cavalier's going to try and capitalise on this dodgy mistake by his former team. And he plays it in to Gilby, who makes it 2-1. Just comical, comical defending from Everton there. And Calvert-Lewin, yet again in the right place at the right time, wins it back and actually plays a lovely ball back to Gilby, who takes it first time, finesse shot past the defender and the keeper into the bottom corner, or around the bottom corner, makes it 2-1. And yeah, game is back in our favour. After a very, very poor start, we've got it back around, turned it around, and it's 2-1. Second half now underway. The last 15 minutes of that first half were just bad for both sides. We didn't really do anything. Referee kind of gave them a few decisions that I'd massively disagree with. But other than that, it was a boring-ish end to the half. Could get a chance here though with Calvert-Lewin. Had a very good game so far and almost makes it perfect by getting another goal. But good save by Pickford. Corner ball now. Let's try to do the same thing as the first. Calvert Lewin's ready for it, but so is Pickford. Guys, fucking read up and learned his errors. But good play afterwards. Boateng whip it in. It's a cracking ball. Van Bergen's simple header should have done better. Should have played it back across to Calvert Lewin. I think Klassen has come on for Rooney, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure if that's a good move or a bad move. Fucking Clerk Salter, what a block! Brilliant. Serge Emmerich with a chance there. Overhead kick, and that is brilliant. Dan Byrne and Clerks all to combine to block that from going in. Beautiful defending. Finish. Mori passed it out. Gilby now trying to cover back. We're going to go defensive now. Going to go defensive. Can't leave ourselves open at the back for this attack to uh, tear us apart. Reese James, that was weak defending, mate. Ball coming in, Costa, you didn't get there, but Randolph did. Very strong perm out for a corner. Brilliant save. Inside, good pass. Across to Massey. Back inside. Back to Massey. And then shoot. Oh! Oh, Gavin Massey! How come the third goal in every game has been beautiful? Grig with the one in the QPR match, and Massey with this one in the Everton match. Run to those fans, you celebrate with them. For a snowball or two, I don't give a shit. Do what you want, mate, because that was fucking amazing. You've come on for Boateng, and you have just fucking provided a brilliant goal there. One touch to settle himself, and then bang in the back of the net. Reminds me of um, Bakri Sacco's goal for Palace. I can't... Was it in the FA Cup against Brighton? That is brilliant, though. Good shot, good goal, 3-1, and we should have won this game now. But if it's a game against Everton, there's one thing that is guaranteed. Goals, goals, goals. And once again, Pickford comes up for the corner. He did it like five minutes ago. Why would he not do it now? That's actually a good ball in. And holy shit, Curdy almost got an overhead kick goal. But he didn't. The game ends 3-1 again. Two 3-1 wins on the bounce. Calvert in the first half was a G. And you know what? I'm actually going to say that Darren Randolph was a good player this match. And will get his name on the shortlist for player of the month. I know, it's the first time it's ever happened, but Randolph did well, made some good saves, fair play to him. And the last game we played against Everton was a 3-3 draw. If it wasn't for Randolph, it could have been the same result, because you see from the stats, they had five shots on target, and I think Randolph actually made about three, maybe four good, good saves, and in other games, they would have gone in and... You know, could have changed this result massively. But it's a 3-1 win to us. 
Six shots on target, scoring half of them. Pickford didn't have the greatest of games, but I don't think he could do anything about either of the three goals. Cabot Lewin's brilliant header, Gilby's lovely finesse shot, and that goal at the end by Gavin Massey. So, you know, it's a 3 1 win. We deserved it, and one more game potentially this episode against Arsenal. Can we complete the 3 1 treble? And this next match will it be against Arsenal at the Emirates, and we've won our last two 3 1 in this episode. So, hopefully, we can continue that and beat Arsenal 3 1. Last time we played these guys, it was a 3 0 win but they did have a weakened side. And also, the news headline before this match was Mirko Royce expected to make debut. So they've signed him and not actually played him. Now, that is just ridiculous, stupid, and something that Ersten Wenger would actually do. And we have one change to a normal starting eleven for this match, and that's Jacobs in for Van Bergen. No real reason, just want to give Jacobs a chance, and Van Bergen's a tiny bit tired, so we'll give him a bit of a break. As for Arsenal, it is a pretty strong side. Sanchez, Lacazette and Keiko up front. El Nenit and Coquelin in the middle, not the strongest midfield purring. But then Bellerin, Koulibaly, no idea who that middle guy is. Koscielny and Tejas at the back with Asenio in goal. But El Nenit and Coquelin, Coquelin in real life has left Arsenal, joined, I think it's Valencia, if I'm not mistaken. And El Nenit is shit. So we should be okay in the midfield battle. But it's going forward and defensively where Arsenal should be strong. Which is unusual for me to say that with the way Arsenal have been playing recently as of me recording this. Which is the 15th of January. That's actually a good pass into El Nenny. There's no one marking him. There's no one marking fucking Lacazette either. And it's a goal for Arsenal. First chance of the game. First shot really. And it's a goal for Arsenal. It has been a utterly wank game. One good pass and they're in. And Sanchez gets a goal. It has been shockingly bad. And I can't say that Arsenal haven't deserved it. But they haven't. And my knuckle just cracked which was horrible. There's no marking from anybody here though. And that is just bad, bad defending. James lacking though. Clerks halted didn't track his man with Lacazette. And because of it, you can fuck off you smiling smug cunt. It's a 1 0 to Arsenal. We've been a bit do uh, shit up front. I better say dodgy, but no, we've been shit. And Arsenal have been shit as well, but they get the breakthrough because our players go to sleep and it's out of my control. One change at half time brought off Salvador, who, you know, like I said earlier in this episode, can have good games and can have shit games. Like 9 out of 10 times he is shit. Today was one of them shit ones. And, oh my fucking. Oh no, that is just. Pretty much summing up her performance at the moment. Cracking ball in. Good first touch. And that is just... That's not Chaplin. That is just bollocks. Really, Jacobs? You ran away from that, I think. You're fine, you did. Why is Dan Byrne covering across there? When he should be in the middle defending that. Because he's a fucking idiot. 2-0 Arsenal, game over. I mean, I know there's plenty of time left. There's like half an hour left in game. But it's over. Completely over. No chance we're getting anything from this match. The game has fucked us completely. Like, you saw the uh, shot. Wow. You saw the shot from Chaplin. That's how bad this game has been for us. Normal back goes in. I didn't aim anything differently. Dan Byrne fucks off though. It goes off the post and goes in. Defensively, we've been okay. There's a few simple mistakes and they've led to two goals for them. Nothing Randolph can do about either of them. Just, yeah, that's FIFA telling us that Arsenal are winning this match. And there's nothing we can do about it. 2-0. Dan Byrne off to Connor Chaplin. Through to Gavin... Ma oh, sorry, Donovan Daniels. Why is my centre-back running forward? I know I've got Dan Byrne up front and I'm, you know, I'm saying this. It might come across... Uh, across? Wow, I'm joining from Ross now. It might come across as a bit of a dick move, but... What the fuck? Why are Daniels uh, not Massey? Massey, you're onside, mate. You were onside, Gavin Massey, and... Oh, fuck off. This game. Fuck off. The game is over. It's a 2-0 defeat. Arsenal got two goals from two shots on target, really. I mean, they had another shot at the start, which was like maybe 30 yards out of the keeper. We got no luck that game. The game was definitely in their favour. Just decisions by the referee, the way they got their goals. Yeah, just not worth it. 2-0 loss. Let's just move on and forget about it. Seeing that makes it worse actually that they only had one shot on target which just says a lot but apparently they got two on that screen on the right I mean even the stats don't know what's happening but 
Like I said, every shot on target they had went in. We just couldn't get any luck. Asenjo made a couple of good saves. I mean, we did everything right apart from finish. Chaplin had that chance. He just put it wide for some reason. I mean, yeah, we put Dan Burn up front for the last, what was it, half an hour or so once they got their second goal, but it wouldn't have made a difference. We could have had a fucking Omri in his prime up front, Drogba in his prime up front. You know, any amazing striker in their prime up front wouldn't be able to do anything in this match. 2 0 loss. And yeah, that is a kick in the balls, but an Arsenal side that is at full strength should beat us, but the way they beat us is quite annoying. So I'm going to end the episode here, people, and as you can see, we are currently in third place. 46 goals scored, 30 conceded. Defensively, we're still not doing as well as I would like, but, you know, it's not too bad considering how other teams are doing. But yeah, we're in third place. Can't really complain about that. Actually, we are six points clear of fifth place Bournemouth, and we have a game in hand but the game in hand is against Southampton, who, as you can see, and as you've seen in the past, don't lose that many games and draw a lot, but we can't beat them. So that is going to be a difficult game. But yeah, there's a table for you. West Brom, Sunderland and West Ham, still the bottom three clubs. That one's changed around ever so slightly, but them three are probably going to go down, if not definitely going to go down. And uh, yeah, we might get top four, definitely top five this season if we keep playing as we are, but... Those games like Arsenal, they're going to be the ones that maybe kick us in the balls and fuck us over. But that'll be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching. I'll see you next time for more of the Wigan Athletic career mode in a couple of days, maybe a day, I don't know. And uh, yeah, goodbye. <laughs>